my name is Lydia Hall. I work for um, Allegheny Highlands Community Services. Currently, I am the Jail Diversion Services Supervisor, which encompasses um, the Adult Treatment Court. Um, I have with me today is Sean Moran, Moran who is um, Ann Gardner's assistant. Um, she apologizes she couldn't be here tonight. So, <clears throat> May of 2020, um, we were approved to start an adult drug treatment court in Allegheny County um, in the city of Covington, and we accepted our first participant of September of 2020. Um, and it's very hard to start a drug court within a pandemic. Um, so just kind of an overview of what drug court is. It's a very intensive program. Um, it encompasses um, intensive treatment along with um, community supervision and judicial oversight. Um, you know, they have to go to court. Most of the time it's weekly. Um, for the farther you get in the phases, the less you have to come um, to your court hearings. Um, those are public. If anybody wants to come and just kind of see how it goes, um, there are Tuesdays at 1 at the circuit court upstairs at the courthouse. Um, so just kind of a census of what we have right now. Um, right now we have 11 males that have been enrolled. Um, there have been 17 that were referred. We've terminated one and one has declined. So it's completely voluntary. Um, we also have eight females enrolled. We have 10 females that's been referred. Um, we haven't had any females terminated and we have had one that has declined. Um, so far we have 19 participants um, as of October 25th. So it typically takes 18 to 24 months to complete the program. Again, it has five phases. The first two phases are the most intensive and then it kind of um, gets less intensive the further you go into it. So right now we have four that are in phase one um, and we have like their day sober. So right now we have a couple that, does, that don't have any day sober because we do expect relapses. Um, within that time, we've got one that's got 56 days, 14 days. Um, we have six that are in phase two, um, and we have a couple that are over 218 days sober. Um, we have four that are in phase three, um, and then we have five that are in phase four. So we are hoping to hopefully have a graduation here soon. We've got a couple that are kind of round and near the end of it. Um, and then we've had a couple of success stories. So when they get up in the higher phases, phases four or phases five, we typically ask them to do like a giving back project, which is just giving back to their community. So um, we've already had two to complete their projects. Um, one individual did a bake sale at the um, Recover Fest and he donated the proceeds of his bake sale to Recover Fest so that they, hopefully that they will come back next year. Um, we had one that did a trash pickup day on October the 22nd on Valley Ridge Road where they collected over 30 um, trash bags full of trash. Um, we actually just had one that completed his project this weekend. Um, and he did like a community event, like a cookout for the community, and people do either gave like a monetary donation or a gift for the Christmas mother. Um, and then we have one that is gonna be sponsoring the Covington Band and Choir. Um, they're trying to take their students on a Disney trip, and it takes a lot of money to send our students. Um, so that individual has decided to try to raise money for them. Um, and then we had asked Deputy Matt Bowser at the um, <coughs> Sheriff's Department and he helped us gather up some information on the, um, the jail cost. So uh, in the year of physical year of 2020, the average operating cost per inmate per day increased to $100.32 $100 and that was up from $8.35 from physical year of 2019. Um, the jail operating costs per inmate, they ranged from a low of $50.07 at the Northern Neck Regional Jail to a high of $354.59 at the Fairfax County Jail. 
So the average daily population for all jails decreased by 6% in the physical year um, 2020 to 26,310. So during the physical year of 2020, 9.7 million inmate responsible days were accrued by Virginia jails. So um, the Physical year of 2020 jail calls per inmate day operating and total expenditures for our jail at Allegheny Regional Jail is 900, no, sorry, $94.61 per day operating. So the per inmate total is $97.36. So because of our local drug court, we have realized savings in the amount of $97.36 times 19 inmates which equals an estimate of $675,191.60 if all were in jail at the same time. Um, anybody have any questions about drug court or how it works? Or? You know, Lydia had asked me if, if we wanted those numbers, and I told her we did because it's, it's hard to quantify <coughs> how effective drug court is. Mm -hmm. And one of the reasons we, we want to have drug court is to, to help people stay out of jail. Right. Mm -hmm. And the numbers kind of justify the idea of what drug court does. And mm -hmm. I, I know some of the people that are in drug court, I know some of the people that help with drug court, and I see some success stories. And mm -hmm. I think it's working the way it's supposed to work. It took, a, like you said, it took a while to get going <laughs> during the pandemic, but it seems yeah. like it's going well. Mm -hmm. And we had... At the Recover Fest, the, the bake sale actually had some desserts from the homestead to sell. Yes. And they were very good. <laughs> and then, uh, everybody, again, my name is Sean Moran. I'm an assistant Commonwealth attorney here. Um, again, Ms. Gardner apologizes. She's currently battling the flu and didn't want to come here and spread it to everyone. I um, appreciate that. I just want to add a few things on to what Lydia said. Um, uh, Community Services Board is on the treatment side of the drug court. The Commonwealth Attorney side is on the um, law enforcement aspect of it. Uh, you know, Lydia had some numbers. We have some numbers here, but I think it, it's hard to quantify. You know, if we were able to save one person, it's really hard to put a number on that. And um, we've had some successes. We've had some um, missteps and uh, miscues. But overall, um, you know, we're trying to do – we believe the drug court is something that is going to make a positive impact on our community and help dealing with um, the drug epidemic that's going on. Um, the drug court is, is one of the tools. It's not a magic bullet. It's not a cure-all. Um, it is just one of the uh, tools we have along with other more traditional things such as um, probation, incarceration, or other treatment options. Um, as Lydia said, our, uh, our drug court started about two years ago. And um, since that time, uh, Botetot and Craig County, um, following our model, have started their own drug court. Um, I think we have some around 20 now uh, uh, that, are, that have been enrolled, uh, or that are, that are now currently enrolled. And then, um, as Lydia mentioned, we did have two, um, one who was terminated and one who um, absconded after he was accepted. Uh, but overall, we think it is something going to be a positive impact for the community. Um, going to help us uh, reduce the drug epidemic that's here. Uh, and if anybody has any questions, uh, I'm more than happy to give them a, give a try and answer them. Council, you got any questions? Very good. Thank you all. Good presentation. Thank you very much. Appreciate the information. Thank you so much. Okay.